back Phil's in Mark 1 it's been a week since I uh, did my last video um, you'll have to excuse um, me repeating myself a few times I'm very new to talking to uh, a camera and pretending it's somebody else there um, yeah it's been a week I chose to do my Primark next as you can see in front of you um, wanted to spend as much time getting this figure right for myself more than anything um, I think I've achieved that and I do hope you agree uh, we'll have a look around the figure what I've done what I've uh, you know the techniques that I've used etc etc so let's begin I've got obviously uh, the madman himself Angron absolute stunning figure um, everything about this figure is just amazing it's an amazing sculpt the poses are fantastic the the dying space marines around him are just as much pleasurable to paint as he was himself um, I just loved everything about it you know, it's, when you get to boring bits like painting weapons etc it was still a pleasure to do these because it was gore father and gore child and it, that was constantly in my head it was you know it's enjoyable to paint so techniques that I've used um, a lot of this figure is airbrushed I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I've recently purchased a new Badger Sotar 2020 and it's just of a different league to all the other brushes that I've used. My other brush is a Badger Chrome, so for something to be better than the Badger Chrome was somewhat of a, a shock to me, so it, it was a, a very good purchase. Um, I can do techniques like the cloaks, I've never ever been able to achieve like a smooth transition between shadow and highlight, and with, with the Badger Sota, I've been able to achieve that, and I didn't use a paintbrush at all on Angron's cloak. It was all airbrushed, and it, it just came out really well. I'll see if I can focus in a little better. Like I say, I'm very new to all this lot, so yes, yeah, so there, there you go. This is a cloak. Um, shoulder pads were all airbrushed. Uh, obviously the detailing was done by a brush um, my first attempt at painting a death guard and I have to say it was enjoyable even though he's dead I didn't use um, a strong white with a death guard I, I, I did use um, a cream um, it was Model Air by Vallejo and I chose to use like a creamy colour because obviously the Death Guard are stinky, really. <laughs> Their uh, suits are going to be in a lot more of a befouled state than anybody else. So I did him very rusty, um, very mucked up. You know, all the crevices have got muck in them. The, the World Eaters are dirty, but they're not dirty stinky, if you know what I mean. So uh, I've been using a lot of transfers, I've always used transfers and I do like them, they're a good thing to use, uh, a lot of people don't like to use them because when they're applied you get like a sheen, but there's, there's stuff out there um, called decal fix um, and decal mediums and they help transfers to, to blend into the paintwork and that's what I use, the by Vallejo. Um, do a Google search you'll find them and they'll help me no end if you want more info or more advice on how to use them then just write a comment and I'll I'll uh, eventually do a video to, to show you how to to uh, apply the decal um, this chap here annoys me something rotten but the thing that uh, annoys me is his shoulder pad with the studs now I've always used that shoulder to identify what legion my army is. 
you know, be it Blood Angels or World Eaters. And it always annoys me when I can put on the Legion badge that side. It's just a personal thing, but um, and I didn't think to change it before painting commenced, so he's had to, you know, not have one. And the old OCD annoys me, but I live with it. So yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic figure. You know, it's um, I'm a one-trick pony. I only collect one army at a time. You know, I, I can't. It's just a personal thing again. I put all my efforts into to just doing the one army at one time. So to the main man himself, he uh, with the gold, etc. It was uh, an absolute pleasure to do. But I've never done a gold brass figure before. So this was my, uh, oh I tell a lie, I did my own, um, oh, what was he called, no, his name, his name eludes me, you'll have to uh, write and tell me what it was, it's, it's the blood angel with the half a mask on his face, not Dan, not Dante, it's the other one, anyway, yeah I did a, a version of him, so I quite like doing it. It's working your way up from really, really dark, brassy tones all the way up to, you know, like a silver, a brilliant silver in some cases where you're highlighting, you know, like the blades on the uh, the elbows, etc, etc. It's a, a stunning figure to have uh, hey, up. Slow down, chat. Yeah, he's a, a beautiful figure to um, to tackle. To get into, you know, it's. Uh, I'm sure uh, anybody that's uh, the old Emperor's children is uh, having just as much fun painting Fulgrim because he's a nice figure as well. And it's not long till the next Primarx out, so there'll be lots and lots of happy campers. So yeah, let's have a wee look closer. If you can zoom in a bit closer. Now, to all the fluff monsters out there that know every nook and cranny about every figure, I'm not one of them guys. I've started listening to audiobooks to learn. I'm not a reader. I can I can sit and paint a figure for nine hours. I can't sit and read a book for five minutes. So, these little Roman whatever they are, leather straps to give him the gladiatorial look. Now nearly every figure I've seen has been red and they just don't work for me so I've left mine black with a little bit of a highlight. His face was such an inspiring thing to start painting. I really enjoyed doing his face. I hope I've done it justice with my highlights etc. I did his teeth and I thought I'd done a really good job and then I looked on the internet and I saw one that was ten times better than mine but hey ho, <laughs> there's always people that are better than uh, somebody else. I don't claim to be anywhere near some of the ones that I see on the internet, some of them are just beyond fantastic. I just know that I enjoy my painting and I'd like to share it with you guys. So, there he is. The angry man. Just listened to the audio book about him yesterday called, what's it called? Butcher's Nails. And the whole story was absolutely fantastic and I enjoyed painting him while I was listening to the audio book. The only thing that annoyed me was his voice. <laughs> I just pictured a real deep, angry, angry voice and it wasn't. <laughs> but anyway, that's just me being fussy. So yeah, if, uh, if there's anything you want to know about decals, etc, etc, just, just give me a comment. Just, you know, comment on the figure, tell me what you think. You know, I hope you... Uh, like it as much as I enjoyed doing it. 
I'm not going to separate him because at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, he's a complete figure. I know you can take the centre part out, and you know, but there's nothing else I can show you on him that you haven't already seen. So there you go. That's my uh, Primark finished, and I might jump on to doing a vehicle. In fact, I'm definitely going to jump on to doing a vehicle because my new Sakaran battle tank turns up tomorrow. And I'm very, very pleased. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you like him. And me, an angry man, will see you again soon. On a blurred face. Cheers, guys.